So hello everyone, my name is Ariana. Uh, my talk today is about using computational science to help improve the electric power grid. The project I'll be presenting today was with my Blue Waters Graduate Fellowship on developing distributed state estimation algorithms. And this was done in collaboration with my advisors, Yue Lu and Na Li at Harvard. So the electric power grid supports much of our critical infrastructure, including our communication networks, our fuel and water supply systems, not to mention our supercomputers, something near and dear to all of us. Um, so we are interested to prevent blackouts, and the electric grid is an aging machine. A lot of it hasn't been significantly updated since the 70s. Um, at the same time, there's a big push to increase the amount of renewable energy that we produce. And this will introduce a lot of uncertainty on the grid because we can't control renewable energy output the same way we can traditional power plants. So I think it's exciting to be in this area because, as a scientist because the electric power grid is a large, interconnected, complex machine. And one of the challenges that motivates my current research is figuring out how to co coordinate control and sensing across a wide geographic area in a decentralized way. So this work involves uh, the areas of estimation, control theory, as well as, I think, interesting collaborations with the scientific computing community. So I wouldn't say that power systems are a traditional use of high-performance computing. I think I'm one of the very few people talking about this here at the symposium. But it is starting to gain interest, and more and more people are working in this area. Um, so one of the first things I thought about and people ask is, where do you get the numbers to run your algorithms and do simulations? A lot of information is proprietary related to power systems. Um, it's not publicly available. However, there are a set of test cases, which are portions of real power grids with realistic numbers that we can work with. Um, so I put three here just to give you a sense of scale. So the power grid is a network. You can model it as a graph with vertices and edges, where edges are the transmission lines, and vertices is anywhere you're either drawing power in or taking power out. A lot of papers um, coming from universities use systems with only hundreds of vertices. That's pretty common. So using Blue Waters, I could test my algorithm on a system with more like a thousand vertices. Uh, so in our research, we're interested in making some of the matrix inversions more efficient, keeping in mind that this is a real-time application. And furthermore, there are new sensors that are being deployed on the electric grid. They're called PMUs. And they're increasing the amount of measurements we have by about a factor of 100. So that's great. We have a better view of what's going on on the grid. But there's a motivation to develop new distributed algorithms that can handle this increase in data rate. So with that, I'd like to present exactly the problem that we're trying to solve in this project. Um, so we're interested in state estimation, which basically helps grid operators monitor the power network in real time. And uh, state estimation um, is when you're given some noisy system measurements and you want to infer the underlying system, sorry, state of the system. And this is an important problem in power systems studied as far back as 1970 by Schwepp. And for us, our measurements consist of some subset of the power flows along transmission lines and the power injections and voltages at vertices. The state of the power network is the voltage at every single vertex in the network. And the measurements are related to the state by a, a set of nonlinear equations. So we're interested oh, sorry. We're interested in doing state estimation in a distributed way. So um, let's look at this figure to see what I mean by that. You can consider this just to be some abstract sensor network where the sensors are blue. And in a traditional centralized approach, um, these sensors will take measurements and then send them all to the central coordinator in red who does the calculation and then sends back the result to each of the sensors. In contrast to this, we want to do a fully distributed scheme. We eliminate the central coordinator, and we only allow communication of information between neighboring nodes in the network. 
So this is interesting because it avoids the communication bottleneck you get by having everyone speak to some central coordinator. And it reduces the amount of computation and memory required per area with respect to what a central coordinator would have to do. So in terms of math statement, uh, we're given some noisy system measurements Z and we want to determine the state X, which is the voltage angle and magnitude at every vertex in the power network. Often this is formulated as a weighted non-linear least squares optimization problem. So our objective function f is the weighted sum of residuals, where the measurements z are related to the state x through some non-linear function h. We can solve this iteratively using Newton's method. Uh, so Newton's method is advantageous with respect to convergence rate. It's a second order method, but it requires inverting the Hessian of the objective function grad squared f at every iteration. So the problem we're trying to solve is how to do this inversion in a fully distributed way. And we propose using matrix splitting techniques. So these were first introduced or developed by Richard Varga in the 60s. And matrix splitting is when you just you take a matrix A and you write it as the sum of two matrices M and N. And this gives you an iterative scheme for solving a linear system AX equals Y. And this iterative scheme will converge to the solution you would get by directly solving as long as the spectral radius of M inverse N is strictly less than 1. So the question is, how do we design M and N so that the sequence will converge and that it's easy to do in a distributed way? So with that, I'll present our solution for this problem. So again, A is the matrix we're splitting, and it's the matrix that we want to invert. So it's the Hessian. And on a technical note, we assume that it's locally positive definite. So one way to split A is to write it as the sum of its diagonal D and its off-diagonal parts E. And then we introduce another diagonal matrix E bar, whose entries are given here. And if we define M and N in this way, we can prove that the sequence will converge. So that's good, objective one complete. And how about making sure that this is easy to do in a distributed way? So M is diagonal. It's trivial to invert. It's easy to do distributedly because each vertex has all of the information it needs locally to compute its corresponding entry in the matrix M. And just to remind you, um, in this scheme, instead of inverting A, the only thing you're inverting is M. So since it's diagonal, um, that makes that easy. And then, so what about N? So power systems, like any electrical circuit, follow Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws. And this leads to N having a sparsity pattern that's related to the underlying power network connectivity. And so to give you insight on why that is, um, here's a toy model. And here are the three different measurements that we look at. So if we measure the voltage directly at B, then the voltage, then that measurement only depends on the voltage at B, which is kind of trivial. But for power flow measurements, if you measure the power flow between A and B, that measurement only depends on the voltage at A and B. And lastly, if you measure power injection at B, that measurement depends only on the voltage at B and B's neighbors, A and C, um, and not anything further out in the network. So it's really this sparsity in N, which makes our algorithm be distributed with a very limited amount of communication. And this is motivating why we chose to do it this way. So here's pseudocode for our algorithm. Um, so you recall we're using Newton's method to minimize the objective function. And when we're solving for the update, for the next Newton iterate, instead of doing a direct linear solve, we do the matrix splitting iterative scheme. So there is a uh, nested inner loop of iterations within each Newton outer loop. And every vertex in the power network gets assigned an MPI process. And we only allow communication to occur between neighboring vertices. So we use the MPI graph communicator, which allows us to use a 
communicated with the exact same structure as the underlying power network. So to illustrate how the communication is occurring, um, if we're at this point in the algorithm, so there is communication at each inner loop and at each outer loop. Um, so here, um, at each, so at the end of the outer loop, A will send its estimate to its neighbor B, B sends its estimate, its current estimate to its neighbors A and C, and C sends its estimate to its neighbor B. So that can all happen in parallel. And then the power injection adds a complication in that A needs some information from C, and C needs information from A, which are passed through B. So now I'd like to show the results we have using Blue Waters on our real power system test cases. So first we wanted to see if we fix the number of matrix splitting iterations, how is the convergence of the objective function behaving as the network size grows. Uh, so here again the objective function is the weighted sum of residuals. So, And we see that we tried four different setups. Uh, from a 14 vertex network to a 3,000 vertex network. And we see that the small network is converging. The larger network hasn't converged yet. So let's focus on the larger one. So here we tried increasing the number of matrix splitting iterations and see that as you increase those iterations, the convergence indeed improves. Um, but there's a trade-off in terms of the runtime. So. Um, because this is meant to be a real-time application, um, that's something important to keep in mind. And then, um, lastly, I thought it was interesting to see if, again, focusing on this 3,000 vertex network, if there's any variation amongst the different vertices in terms of their convergence. And we do see that for, say, node or vertex 254 in orange, is converging very quickly. Um, but Vertex, for instance, 791 in green is taking a lot more iterations. So there is variation, and I'm curious if we can take advantage of that to speed this up. Uh, so the next set of results are related to the timing performance. Um, again, we fixed the number of iterations, and we want to compare how the computation and the communication time scales for different network sizes. Um, so in terms of the setup times, it looks, um, oh, sorry. Um, so here we're running only for 14 vertices. It's one node on Blue Waters. When you jump to more than one node, the, it increases, but then it stays uniform, which is good. Um, we're really happy to see that the communication time um, is basically staying constant from 14 up to 3,000 vertices. And it's the computation that's increasing. So that's what we'll focus on um, to try and speed this up more. And then the last figure I have, uh, I was just looking at the 14 vertex network, and I wanted to see how the communication time is varying amongst different processes. And one interesting thing is, um, so vertex 4 or process 4 spends the most time communicating, and it also has the largest number of neighbors. Uh, so Blue Waters has been really valuable for this project because it allowed me to test this algorithm on a large-scale system with thousands of vertices, assigning each vertex to an MPI process. And to summarize, we presented a new fully distributed state estimation algorithm that uses matrix splitting techniques. Some of its advantages are that it requires a limited sharing of information between the neighboring vertices, saving computation time. It also saves on memory resources because um, each processor only needs to hold information about its own state and some of its neighboring states, um, in contrast to other algorithms that require each processor to hold information about the global system. We did an implementation in C++ using MPI, um, and so a lot of power system stuff is exclusively in MATLAB, so I'm happy to start to broaden that. Um, for future work, we're interested, at least on this project, in developing new local pre-processing or compression schemes for the messages and also asynchronous communication schemes um, and see how the algorithm would perform in that setting. Um, and this is really important because for this application, 
these different processors will actually be geographically far apart and we can't assume that the communication would be that reliable. This would also help reduce network traffic, speeding up the algorithm. So with that, I'd like to thank the Blue Waters Graduate Fellowship Program for supporting me this year, as well as the NCSA staff and my point of contact, Craig Stefan, for all of their help using Blue Waters. Thank you. Happy to take any questions. I definitely think so. So I haven't done a lot of work in this area. I think like this project relates to that in a sort of more of an indirect way and in that the better we're able to do state estimation, the better we monitor the grid. So we'll be able to react better. But I've seen some studies that um, they have different scenarios for you have this kind of renewable energy production, this kind of weather, run a lot of Monte Carlo simulations and then see basically how much natural gas reserves you have to fire up to keep the system steady. Um, so I think yeah, this is an interesting area. Okay. How large is your uh, global footprint? Like the, the matrix that you mentioned. Sorry? How large is your matrix that you're ah, So the systems I show were, the largest one was a 3,374 system, and the matrix inverted is 3,374 by 3,374. So for compared to other applications, that's not very big. But here the problem is we want this to happen on the order of seconds, and we want to avoid sending measurements, which are perhaps taken geographically far apart, sending them to some central area. The reason I'm asking you, uh, I'm a PI of the project. solver for you actually to speed up these things you know without splitting it just solving it directly i think so the reason we avoided the direct solve was that it requires having all of the measurements in one area so we wanted to avoid the time it would take to send all the measurements to one area and that's why we're advocating a distributed approach um but if there was not that constraint like definitely direct approaches are something to keep in mind and explore Speaker again.